it's Chris, and I just got back from WWDC 2018, and I want to tell you about my favorite macOS Mojave features, starting with my least favorite, ranked all the way up to my very favorite. We're going to have 10 things to cover. I have a feeling that my list is going to look a lot different than most other people. So I'm excited for you to see this. I'm excited for you to tell me what your number one feature is. At number 10 on my list is just the better privacy features. Now, this isn't something that's super exciting. It's not flashy, but it is very important. And I personally really appreciate Apple having people's backs here. So kind of like on the iPhone, Mojave is going to require apps to ask for your permission before they can get access to your your microphone and camera. Additionally, kind of going along with security, although I don't know if this makes it more secure, but it's convenient, is the fact that you can ask Siri for a password. So you can say, hey Siri, what's my Spotify password? And then it will bring that up in the keychain. But the coolest privacy feature in Mojave is that Safari won't let sites and services ID your computer's digital fingerprint, so companies won't be able to figure out who you are based on the fonts and other identifiers that you might be spilling out for people to analyze. Safari is also gonna be able to prevent like buttons and comment fields from tracking you as well. And here's the thing, this is what I really like about this. The average consumer has no idea what's tracking them, what's being collected, and so here's Apple saying, don't worry, we'll take care of this stuff that we know about for you. Today's sponsor is Forklift, the most advanced dual pane file manager and file transfer client for Mac OS. Thanks to the dual pane outlay, you can copy, move, sync, and rename files more easily with Forklift. Forklift is a very versatile app which is useful for every Mac user, but a must have for developers. You can connect to remote servers using a wide array of protocols, and with Forklift, you can edit files on a remote connection. So make sure to check out Forklift using the link down in the description. Use our coupon code DAILYTECH to get 50% off. Next up, at number nine on my list is the brand new dynamic desktop feature which is cool even if it's not super useful necessarily but what I like about it is that I get bored of my wallpapers no matter how cool the pictures are so to be able to change that up throughout the day I really love that what happens here is that the desktop picture changes subtly throughout the day to reflect what time it is so it's gonna look a little bit different in the morning than it is in the evening or at night Personally, I really like this move away from static images because what it does is it makes your device feel a little bit more alive and a little bit less mechanical. So this is one thing that I haven't tested out yet, but I can't wait to do. At number eight, it's two out of the four brand new apps coming to macOS Mojave. I'm really excited about news and voice memos. I'm very unexcited about stocks and I'm less excited about the home app. The Apple News app on iOS has already become my go-to news source lately. I like it a lot and unlike iBooks, which is now Apple Books, I can see myself wanting to read Apple News on the desktop. For instance, there's times when I think it would be even easier to drill down into what I'm looking for and the stuff that I'm really interested thanks to the interface and that sidebar. Voice memos coming to Mac OS is gonna be cool for people who do like podcasts or any kind of voice content. And what's really cool here for me is being able to easily access the stuff that I've recorded on the voice memos app on my phone. And number seven for me is the new Mac App Store redesign. And it's not the design itself that has me excited. I'm excited for developers to get back in the game and start developing and getting into that store again because that's been a bit of a joke for a little bit. So the redesign is very much like the redesign that happened on iOS last year, and it's good for one reason, discovery, which is perfect for developers and people alike. Users and developers need stuff to be discovered. You wanna discover stuff to use it, developers need you to discover stuff so that they can have a business and so we can all have this great ecosystem. My number six is screenshot enhancements, which again are very familiar to people who are used to doing screenshots now in iOS. Screenshots seems like a really boring thing, but it's something that I do all the time and I'm guessing that you do quite a bit of as well. So to be able to have some new, more powerful tools surrounding that is pretty cool. Maybe even cooler than just static screenshots is the fact that you can now screen record natively without some third party app, which is huge. And then when you're done, you can share it really easily. At number five, and now we're getting into the top half of this list, is continuity camera, which is brand new, and I think totally unexpected. Nobody saw this coming. So here, you can use your iPhone to shoot a nearby object or document and have it instantly appear on your Mac. So you could immediately place a photo in Pages, for instance, or you could scan a document and have it instantly show up in Finder as a straightened PDF that you can sign and send off. So continuity camera is gonna work in mail, notes, pages, keynote, numbers, and more. And the thing is, it saves you some time. Like, even if it's just fractions of a second, well, I think it's more than that, that adds up. And so anything that creates less friction is a very good thing. Number four, the new finder enhancements. And again, these are small changes, subtle, but very useful. 
So the new Finder quick actions will let you rotate images or mark them up really fast. And there's also a new gallery view to help you visually identify what you're looking for using scrollable big previews. So one of the coolest parts about this for me is all the new metadata that you can see. So if you select a picture and photographers are very familiar with this, you can get all this info without having to say get info. You can see when it was taken, where it was taken, any tags that you've given it, the file type, the color space, all kinds of useful information. And finally, at number three, we get to the new dark mode, which is not number one for me. It's cool, but it's not number one cool. So just like several popular apps have been getting dark modes lately on your phone, Mac OS itself is now getting a full dark mode. I mean, dark mode is not gonna make you more productive or anything, it's just a new way to look at things. But still, it's pretty neat. The one thing that it will do though is make your photos and videos pop a little bit extra and of course people like to use dark modes at nighttime. So dark mode works right out of the box with Finder, Messages, Keynote, Safari, Calendar, etc. And third party apps are also gonna be able to implement dark modes, but that's totally up to the developers. Now we're really starting to get into the good stuff. At number two, it's Stacks, which is all about keeping your desktop more organized. So Stacks automatically organizes your files into related sets, so you can group by kind to see images, documents, spreadsheets, PDFs, there's other ways to organize stuff, and then you can scrub through your Stacks to select what you actually wanna work on. I think Stacks is gonna become a lot of people's new best friend because the desktop automatically just becomes cluttered. No matter what you do, it's just a natural place for files to end up, it can get very messy, and nobody wants to sit there organizing and cleaning up. So stacks. So number one for me, and this is where I think it's gonna be very different from probably every other video that you've seen, is quick look enhancement, seriously. Now, a lot of people probably pick dark mode or some other feature, dynamic desktop or something, but for me, I use quick look all the time, so the idea that I could do a lot more with just hitting the space bar is awesome. So if you don't know, quick look is when you hit space bar and preview a selected file, and now you can quick look and edit up a PDF or rotate and crop an image, you can trim audio, video, and lots more. The icing on the cake is that whenever you're done editing whatever it is that you edited, without having to open an app at all, by the way, then you can airdrop it. And airdrop is like one of my favorite things ever. So that's it for this video. If there's anything else that you wanna know about from WWDC, let me know. I'll try to answer those down in the comments for the first day or two at least. Also, I should note that we hit 100,000 subscribers very recently, like last week or something, and I have some content planned for you coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Maybe a giveaway, we'll see. Uh, but thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.